So welcome everybody, and I think you're going to really enjoy this session. Uh, ben Rubin is is um, sort of put this together. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to have Ben introduce his panel, but also kind of explain to you how the the rest of the morning and and the uh, afternoon is going to is going to run. So Ben, take it over. Good morning, Alan. If I could have the slides. It's nice to see so many friends. Um, it's a little humbling because some of the people that are sitting here are some of the people that taught me a lot about physical therapy, but um, we'll give it a shot. Um, so our uh, task today is to talk about uh, rehabilitative care from pathology to rehabilitation and beyond. Um, I'm really pleased with the people that uh, have uh, agreed to join me. Uh, Nick Verma is here from Chicago. Uh, originally, Matt Preventure was on the program, and <clears throat> he's on a, uh, a hospital ship uh, doing work with the Navy in Cambodia. Uh, so Nick is filling in for him. And um, Pat St. Pierre is here from uh, Rancho Mirage, uh, the Desert Orthopedic Group. And Pat's been a friend for a number of years, so I'm excited that he's participating. And Mark Kazuki, who's a very skilled physical therapist who I um, have the privilege of working with on a regular basis, um, is going to be here to um, make sure we do things properly. So the plan is that uh, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> uh, st uh, structural versus functional failure, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, Pat will uh, talk about um, how he um, optimizes his outcomes by uh, how he approaches the patient uh, in the office. And we have a patient uh, that's from the, uh, actually a Hyatt employee that we found yesterday that we haven't seen yet that has a shoulder problem. I don't know what the shoulder problem is, and I don't know what we're going to get to see, but We'll do the exam, and then <clears throat> Mark Kazuki, when we come back, is going to talk about how he would approach that patient with a f setting up a physical therapy program. And then I'll talk a little bit about uh, how to set up protocols and what I think therapists need to be teaching patients. And then Nick will talk about rehabilitating patients with instability, whether they're having surgery or not. And Pat will uh, talk about um, how, he, how he thinks therapy uh, should be practiced uh, as far as home therapy versus office therapy and with the changing economy, that's a pretty critical talk for us. And we're gonna have a number of case presentations. Um, that's gonna finish the morning and then um, in the afternoon, I'm gonna do a breakout session with the physical therapist and we have another patient, uh, that an orthopedic surgeon with, uh, with an instability problem and I just met her yesterday and haven't even had time to get a history. So we'll, we'll see what that shows us. Um, so if I could have my slides, please, Alan, we can get started. Um, my disclosure, I, I do have a royalty and honorarium agreement with uh, Arthrex, and I'm a stockholder in AlignMed. Well, why do patients come to see us? Usually because they, they're having pain, sometimes because of a dysfunction, but most of the time it's because of pain. And they either see us or a physiatrist, chiropractor, physical therapist, or an athletic trainer. Problem is that we all speak different languages and we have trouble communicating with each other and I'm hoping to bridge that gap a little bit today. Well, pain happens either because there's structural failure, which is what you can see either on x-ray, MRI, or arthroscopically. But more commonly, there's a functional failure and that presents itself as abnormal movements. We as orthopedists have been trained to think in terms of structural lesions. What can we fix? What can we take to the OR and correct the anatomy? And therefore, we in general have been, uh, over the, in the past, have learned to evaluate patients on a local level. Uh, we look at muscle strength, range of motion, joint mobility, and then we get special tests, x-ray, CT, MR, and at some, time, at some point may do arthroscopy. Functional problems, on the other hand, involve the sensory motor system with secondary structural inflammation. So if you think about the things that are the most vexing to us in the office, chronic low back pain, sacroiliac joint dysfunction, anterior shoulder pain, anterior knee pain, those are the things we don't operate on. But they're the things that are constantly coming into the office, and those, to me, are the functional problems. So the, the purpose of our exam is to determine the functional deficits and the mechanical flaws within the sensory motor system that lead to the structural failure. And that enables you to identify not just the source of the pain, the itis is, but the cause of the pain. Maybe structural, maybe functional, maybe both. If you identify the cause, you can eliminate the problem rather than treat the symptoms. Well, we know that movement is dependent on the interaction of structural and functional components, that is the musculoskeletal and central nervous systems. 
So I want you to think in terms of functional pathology, and that goes back to posture, postural stability, muscle tone, movement patterns, and the kinetic chain. We've been taught that there's a ball in, the ball and socket analogy is a golf ball sitting on a tee. Well, that's, that's not very dynamic. Um, it's more the, the head of the humerus goes wherever the scapula goes. Therefore, you have to evaluate the shoulder in the context of the kinetic chain and look at the scapula. Phil McClure from Arcadia University was kind enough to give me this, um, this video, um, it was, which was done with an electromagnetic tracking system. And what you'll see is, as the arm moves up, the scapula rotates upward, externally rotates, and posteriorly tilts. There are clavicular motions as well, but we'll stick with the scapula on this. So if you watch it on the next, it goes, it goes up, it go, rotates externally, and then it tilts posteriorly. Injured throwers lose the ability to externally rotate their scapula. They lose elevation, they lose posterior tilt, and that manifests itself as medial scapular border winging. So here's the way I look at the kinetic chain. It's a busy slide, we'll go through it very quickly in steps, but if you have a proximal kinetic chain deficit or pect minor tightness or some kind of neuropathy, it alters the force couples that control the scapula. But also that'll happen if you have muscle fatigue, which gives you altered proprioception. Ultimately, the key to this slide is you will have abnormal scapular mobility. That alters the glenohumeral kinematics, increased stress on the glenohumeral joint capsule, primarily anteriorly, and the cuff, and then you get distal failure, and any pathology you can think of in the shoulder can be related to scapular uh, dyskinesis. Glenohumeral internal rotation deficit has its own little category because that can cause the scapular uh, uh, dyskinesis. But ultimately, if you have distal failure, there's pain, and that's usually the way the patient presents. The pain selectively inhibits the serratus anterior and lower trap, and that alter causes the altered uh, force couples of the scapula and abnormal scapular mobility. The key when the patient comes in is to figure out where they are on this chart, because then, you've, then you know whether you've got to correct the uh, structural pathology or you can fix the functional problem. So the exam helps tell you whether you, uh, the patient will respond to rehab or if you've got to do something to uh, correct the structural abnormality. It also lays the groundwork for making the decision, who do you operate on? Because when the patient comes in and they have laxity, you've got to differentiate between laxity and instability. And ultimately, if you do operate on that patient, uh, the rehab uh, sets you up for a better result. So you've got to be very careful if you don't know where you're going because you may not get there. So how do we get there? Um, the functional evaluation includes a history. I think 90% of the diagnoses I make on shoulders uh, comes from the history. If you listen to the patient, they'll tell you the diagnosis. You just have to listen. Um, Want to look at postural alignment, core strength and stability, scapula thoracic kinematics, muscle imbalances, range of motion, and the special tests that we do. Well, that means you've got to look at the kinetic chain. So in a thrower's history, you want to ask um, a bunch of questions. Uh, this is just a, an example, uh, and the questions are listed here. Let's get to the physical exam. We ask our patients to, for women to bring in a, a tank top or a sports, a sports bra. Men, we're going to examine without their top. And you have to choreograph and rehearse your exam so that you're efficient. Back to yoga. You can observe, observe a lot just by watching. So what do you want to look at in alignment? Well, you want to see, you want to look from the front, the side, and the back. You want to see that the shoulders, I'm pointing over on the left, that the shoulders are level. The clavicles make a 20-degree angle. The hands come down the side. The pelvis is level in all planes. The chin is level with the ground. Hands come down to where the seam of the pants would be. These are just observations that you make just quickly looking at the patient after enough practice with it. Now, what about somebody that presents like this, which for the physical therapist, this would be Yonder's upper cross syndrome. Um, the head is forward. The scapulae are internally rotated and anteriorly tilted. There's pelvic tilt. Um, his, his knees are... Um, he actually hyperextends, his feet are flat and externally rotated. Those are the kind of observations you have to get used to making. So here's a 16-year-old thrower, quarterback, and pitcher. And when you look at him, he's got the typical right shoulder droop, the right nipple is low, his clavicle is low, and when you look at his hands, his right hand is rotated around to the, both hands actually, rotated around to the front. This is a functional test that I've been doing more and more in the office, and when I presented this at the Anna meeting, uh, Kevin Wilk made the comment that in the NFL combine, the test that correlates best with long-term history of injury in the